Welcome to the Gym Wits Podcast. I'm Ryan George. I'm Justin Guild, a.k.a. Chef Sonic. And we are the Gym Wits. So I saw Spider-Man this week. You have any interest in seeing that? Uh, maybe. No, you don't. You're not, you're not big into like the, the comic book movies. You, you know what I saw? I what? saw that movie uh, Baby Driver. Okay, I heard that's good. Yeah, I, it, I don't know why they said it was good. It was a typical really? Hollywood action movie. Really? I, I it got hard... crazy reviews and there's yeah. some hot chase scenes, but it's like... Really, Not that good. it's Edgar Wright. He's he's great. He did like the the Shaun of the Dead and that that kind of yeah, trilogy movie. Not and that good. It's really? like it's huh. there's some hot chase scenes, but it, it just I, I'm I'm totally cool with suspending my disbelief. Yeah. So I don't care about like the the, the driving. Like if you want to make him a superhero driver, that's great. But it's the other things that yeah. really uh, annoy me. As a, a, a pseudo spoiler alert, Kevin Spacey is this hardened criminal, and then at the end, he just decides to do something out of the goodness of his heart. Oh, I mean, right? if, the, if it the, just if doesn't, it, if it's no, built, it, if, if it somehow is built into the but plot, but it's not or if built, built into the that, plot, yeah. it doesn't make sense. Huh. It, it's too, it's, you have these brilliant criminals, and then they just, then they, they don't do certain things the right way. Yeah. Uh, not necessarily that, but um, then there's too much in the big city, and it just, everything happens in this, small little area and there's too many ridiculous coincidences it's uh, you know it just doesn't really oh i gotta uh, well that, that was on my list of things to watch but like uh, w- this is probably gonna be released um in there a few weeks some- so there's like uh planet of the apes which is getting amazing reviews i'm gonna see that and then there's dunkirk which i want to see and then i'm like away for the next month but uh but i wanted to see baby driver so i'm a little it, disappointed it, i'll tell you at the 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 last 30 minutes just turns into a gun flick. It yeah, turns but into a like, shoot 'em up. It's like, but it's not Yeah, but I just, think you, you kinda have to expect that most action movies devolve into a third act like just stupid violence for the sake of being violent. Like what movie big action movie really hasn't done that? But it, it's okay if that's what it's about, if it's yeah, like a cool shoot 'em up. Yes, okay. But if it's it's not that. It's yeah. like you you expect it with like the Expendables because it's a spoof on those types of movies. Yeah. And I enjoy the I enjoy the Expendables, <clears throat> but it's it's not. It, yeah, there's a big action, a big scene at the end, but it, but that wasn't the movie. He's he's not a gunslinger. This guy is a driver, so it's like I expected there big big chases okay, or have to use his yeah. driving to get out of it. And there was some of that, but it just turned into a shoot 'em up gun flick, and there was just too many ridiculous things and. The it felt the, it started off pretty cool. Oh, the other thing is that it was just very contrived with him like walking down the street and like sort of dancing and moving out of the way of this one person. Oh, and he catches his coffee and walks off, and he's just super cool walking down the street and just doing everything. Up, oh, he flips open the door, yeah. and walks by the girl, and she winks. Like you know what I'm talking about? It's so I- contrived that this kid is so <sighs> cool. You. Know, no, that's why I liked the the older action movies, you know, from the uh, from the from the nineteen eighties and early nineties, be- because there was an element of flaw in the heroes, like mm-hmm. Die Hard, like Bruce Willis in that movie is seriously flawed. Like mm-hmm. he's not super slick and cool. Like he gets it done. I guess that's part of the appeal to it. Yeah. Or uh, you know, in what are some other like like lethal weapon movies yeah. there's like they're yeah. flawed they're they're flawed characters they might be cool but like yeah. there's a little there's a little sense of humor but this it's just so everyone is so cool and then they'll just like you know they'll you know they'll they'll kill someone mm-hmm. and be cool doing it without a blink even in the even in the old action movies like to kill someone and there's a sense of i just been through this but they just do it as, as if they're you know as if they're um you know drinking a beer or something like that I, I, I gotta just see it because I, I, I of... really like Edgar Wright as a director. So I'm wondering how much of it is is just the style that you're you don't particularly like, and how much of it is like yeah, it's, just, it's just not that. I can't imagine getting it that wrong. But uh, I mean, it's not. I mean, it's entertaining. Yeah, but it's just not that good. Well, I mean, yeah. Well, this thing is, it's got to compare it to other action movies. Wow, it's we, just, we really went off off of fitness today. She like the Jim Witz movie reviews. <laughs> it's just. Well, for my end, Spider Man was really good. If you is haven't it? seen it, it's it's actually excellent. It's probably the best. It's easily huh. to me the best Spider Man movie. Nice. Uh, Michael Keaton's amazing. Huh. Um, like he's he's actually like he's awesome in it as as like the villain, huh. and uh, it has one of the best, the single best scenes in any of these comic book movies. All right. uh, it, in it happens I to me. Check it out. Happens in this. Like I I can't think of any 
and, and it doesn't it's not action oriented the, the right. scene it's like but one of the best scenes I've seen in any of the, any comic book movies but it's really good it kind of captures the feeling of high school All right. um, and you, you know it's it's it's, a, it's excellent so yeah okay. I was definitely not as disappointed in Spider-Man as you seem to be with Baby Driver no. but I'll, I guess I'll update you when I go see Baby Driver I, mean, I wasn't disappointed I was it was entertaining it just wasn't that good yeah it's like pick out any action movie, you know, from you know 1986 to 1995, right? That they play on, you know, TBS or any of the HBOs. Just pick pick one, and it's better than this. Huh? A lot of those don't hold up. Oh, there's a lot of. Of course, there's a lot of yeah. terrible ones. But, but no, like, I get it. I understand. Choose any of your any of your run of the mill blockbuster action Hollywood movies and they're all better than this all of them okay you know interesting well I'll, I'll check it out and, and update you and, and uh, any of our listeners that seem that have interest in seeing Baby yeah. Driver so anyway on to fitnessy stuff uh, since it's uh, we're not doing a cheat meal today <laughs> well, we should, maybe should have discussed this earlier uh, we got a study for the week okay. so um, let me ask you so, so what do you think what's the difference we, we've seen that like world's strongest man or strong man competitors are typically not as bad muscularly developed and massive as bodybuilders and yet they're stronger right like like a world's strongest man competitor is going to be doesn't physically look, strong Do, doesn't well, no, I'm, look. I'm saying it, they, they don't they have must, necess- oh, the, the, the musculature mass built or the musculature of or it's similar so what, what well, they're certainly not as uh, their their what, muscles are not as rounded they're not as well, it's not about aesthetically that. So, no, it's not, no, the, 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 they the, might not be as mus, much mus, much uh, much muscle mass You're, yeah so, so the difference being right with a bodybuilder it's not about the shape of their muscles it's the the body fat right like we don't it's the the size of the muscles and the the lack of body fat that yeah. determines your looks like you can't shape a muscle so no. you know if they're rounder it's only because they have less body fat but yeah, if you yeah. you know well, that, so, that's so, what I, so what i'm saying is you know body Bodybuilders are typically not as physically strong as strongman competitors, no. even though they look cl- some, like something closer to like what you would see in a in a comic book. So, what do you think accounts for that difference in strength? Let's say you get, they're both the same size. Why is the body? Why is the power lifter or the strongman stronger than the bodybuilder? Well, first, I'm gonna have to. I, I know there's a lot that goes into this, but you're also gonna have to introduce an element of power right there that within the strongman stuff there's also speed mm-hmm. and uh there's also speed and athletic ability that goes into this mm-hmm. so part of being very strong being able to like lift something re- also requires enormous balance and um with certain things, speed as well, the ability to explode and accelerate. Like if you're doing uh, some sort of, some sort of squatting thing, or the or the where you throw the kegs, that's an explosive movement. And what that accounts is, for that? Huh? What what's the phys- is, is Well, first the training. You have to train. Yeah. You have to train your body to be able to to train your muscles to do that. So it's um you don't by getting your muscles bigger, you're not necessarily training them for those that range of motion. Mm-hmm. You're not training them for that type of activity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so maybe you, were, you were on the right track. Um, pretty much the right idea. So basically... Well, first, I'm sorry, what is... Um, can you think of a strongman uh, event that is really strength, not power... But strength well, based. Oh yeah, like like well, let's. If, it depends on what. Look, I mean, like maybe if you have a to bench hold press, s- is no, but strength. That's, uh, yeah, but it's also an element. Of, not a, not so. I mean, there's some obviously there's well, going to be something where you hold something up or you well, have to. Well, you look at the guys that the, like the world's strongest man where they like they have the giant boulder and they got to wrap the arms around and squat and pick. But the there's thing up. so much or, more athletic. Or the walking, Atlas Stones walking. But, that's, but the, there's but there's a lot more. There's uh, there's uh, I'm, I'm talking about something that doesn't involve. Um, that d- doesn't involve uh, power. That doesn't involve athleticism. How about holding two uh, ju- jugs of two hundred pounds? That's what I'm thinking. Okay, like where you have like to hold you, those things up. You hold it and walk with it, or something like that, where it's kind of more isometric. Well, either way, bit, yeah. regardless, the the real main difference, because basically one of the when we're going to go a deeper dive into what strength is in a couple of weeks, but one of the main variables is the kind of cross section of your of your muscles like how how much area it, physically how much area is in the muscle right like how much muscle do you have and that's one of the main indicators of your actual strength right but, so but wouldn't that 
contradict what we're saying? Well, you know, well, I'm going to explain that. Okay, that's okay. that's the whole point of, of this study and, and something we've known for a while. So it's not anything new, but this kind of helps. You know, it's another, you know, example that kind of helps to solidify this. But basically, if we're trying to figure out what's the difference, why, because again, bodybuilders are, are often larger than weightlifters. They have larger muscles, la- larger cross-section area of the muscles, but they're not as strong as a strong man. And basically, the main difference is neuro- like the neuromuscular or nervous system activation. Um, and so, and this is from a, the study, the University of Nebraska Lincoln is where, where you know, the study is. I'll link to it in the show notes. But um, if we just go back, let's take it away. I, I wanted to ask you the question because the, the clear example is bodybuilders versus weightlifters. But the I mean strong men. I mean, sorry, strong men versus uh, bodybuilders. But the the idea really just comes down to when we're in the gym doing high reps, high, not super high reps, but higher reps and lower weight can be just as effective for building muscle as doing higher weight and lower reps. So they, they it, at some level, you're getting equal results as far as the amount of size you get, but you're not getting as much strength if you do the lower the lower weight and the higher reps. And obviously, part of it, it's just, it intuitively makes sense. If you're training in a way that enhances your actual physical strength, you should be stronger than if you're, you know, if you're doing heavier weights, that should make you physically stronger than if you're doing lighter weights. So just kind of intuitively, it makes sense. But like, we do want to figure out what's the system, because if you're growing the same way, either side, either way, what what matters? So basically, the way that the study, the way that they ran the study was, um, they assembled, so it's 20, 26 people who were randomly assigned to two groups. Uh, one group was working at 80% of, of their um, one rep max, and the other group was working at 30%, right? So you had, again, one group working higher weight, lower reps, and the other one working at lower weight and higher reps. And uh, this was a six-week program, and they were basically assigned to lift to failure, with the leg extension, um, again, over six weeks. So what they found after the six weeks was that each group made similar progress as far as the actual size of the muscles. But then they wanted to test, you know, how did this relate to their actual strength? So this is where it gets um, interesting. So basically what they did is if you, so when we voluntarily do a maximum lift, so whatever your maximum is voluntarily, it's not it's not what your muscles are maximally capable of. It's the maximum that you can recruit. So if you using electrical stimulation, you can actually figure out what the maximum, you know, force output is. So what they did was they, they took their maximum force output, right. Of, of like a leg of a leg extension. And so that was like the baseline. And then they took the two groups and measured their voluntary maximum, against what their actual maximum was. So what they found was that compared to their compared to their voluntary or compared to their involuntary maximum, the group that did the higher weight and the lower reps improved by about 2.35% in their strength. So their maximum voluntary kind of strength improved by 2.3% on that one move. And the other group only improved by 0.15% or 0.15%. So, so so the group that did the heavier weights significantly improved, especially compared to the other group. And I think the main reason is the main kind of um, reason why is that the higher weight or the higher loads allows for kind of greater uh, motor uh, motor unit um, activation. So basically okay. you're just, you're recruiting more motor units, which sure, again, we're sure. going to talk a little bit more about in a couple of weeks in a strength episode, but you recruit more in order to handle the increased load, which makes sense. But you know, it's important, um, for in a couple of ways. So basically when you're dealing with strength, strength is a little bit different again from muscle size. They're typically correlated because sure. muscu- musculature has something to do with it. Have small but muscles too. It's the, the brain and the body working together, that's really a large component in strength that we don't consider. Now, the other important thing is as well that if your goal is to gain muscle, you can do that by lifting lighter weights 
sure. you know, and, and just doing more repetition. So if you're worried about risk of injury or, or stress on a joint, you can always do less weight and more repetitions and you'll essentially get the same results, uh, you know, as if you're doing higher weight. So, so you know, so that was basically the, the uh, main thing. I'm curious about one aspect of, of, of this and, and maybe there's a lot of technique involved. So when you look at say a female bodybuilder, mm-hmm. I'm, not, I'm sorry, not a female bodybuilder, a female Olympic weightlifter. Some of them are not very big, especially at the lighter yeah. weights, but they are able to lift really. Well, well, we're looking at a, so a couple things you can do. So first so of how all, how do you factor that when, in? I mean, their muscles aren't small. If you're small, talking about, so, so you've got two different things. You've got, you've got like the uh, weightlifting, where you got like powerlifting, which is like the bench press, the squat, and the deadlift. And those are more about strength like your actual like how much Olympic you lifts, can which move. are a lot about momentum. Yeah, exactly. So so I think when it comes to Olympic lifts, they're much more about yeah momentum and, and a lot technique. of power and strength yes, involved. Too. But it's a lot more technique and momentum involved in those and power than in the in the uh, power lifts. Which ironically, like it shouldn't be power lifting; it should be the other way around. But yeah, yeah, the yeah, power yeah. lifts, which it's more about raw strength. Like what can you lift without time being really a, a factor. So where with, with power, with, with explosive lifts, power or time is an issue. So yes, that, that, that's a great example. So you do see weightlifters that do ex- incredible weights who aren't that big. There, there are many female and male weightlifters and, and powerlifters for that matter that can do far more than I could ever do on any of those lifts. And they're much smaller than me. So a lot of it does have to do with the neuromuscular ad- activation. So there is, it's it's not just how big you are, but also technique and also how quickly you can recruit the muscles to produce the movement. So like you know, even I, I know I said that Which like is probably a fancy word for efficiency. Or yeah, fancy term I, you know what? Yeah, absolutely. It is it is efficiency. And I think you know I I I'm not going to go through that whole. That was a I'm not reading that whole study again. Yeah, yeah. But there was a component to the study that I didn't really write write out in my own notes that had to do with the efficiency of the movement. So you know, in that you you do become more efficient with it. But I I I'm, I will butcher whatever it is. So again, <laughs> you can look at the show notes if you want to read more about the study. But I think the more in, more important component for us is if you want to get stronger. You got to lift heavier, lift and heavier. that's more about act again neuro- neuromuscular activation combined with the strength. And if you want to just get bigger, you don't necessarily have to lift, lift heavy more. You just there's have a lot to. of bodybuilders that actually swore by just doing lots hey, of I, I, small. I, I, I say this all the time. When I was lifting, doing heavy squats and deadlifts, my legs were not nearly as big as they are now, and now I just do tons of kicks and burpees and sprints. So you know, it, it's it, but the volume of work that I put my legs through. It, and things that are more that do require power and neuromuscular a- activation, it, you know that that's more than when I was just you know doing heavy squats and deadlifts. So you know there there's there are very you have many options when it comes to weightlifting. Sure, sure. So anyway, we did a lot on the, between the movies and this. I think we've got a full episode. Yeah, here. yeah. So anyway, what's the discussion topic okay. today? I guess well, how'd so, you come to this? So I you just were frustrated got back and lost from a lot of money, Atlantic right? City. Well, no, I didn't lose no. money. I just didn't make as much as I should have. Yeah. Right, so uh, now in poker, there is a big element, for those who don't know, have never played poker, there's a big element of luck, right? So in any single in any single sitting, you can get very unlucky, and even the best card player will lo- can lose to the, 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 big, the most novice green player just out of sheer luck, right? So we're going to take luck out of this, um, you know, because poker is over time a game of skill. Um, so, with that being said, yes, I did get. I had many instances where I got uh, mathematically very unlucky. I'll, I'll talk about. There was one hand in particular, which was in a tournament that I played, where I was a three to one favorite over someone and I lost. So that means I will win that hand two out of every three times. It's like if you could place a bet where you'll win. Even money, two out of three times, you would take it every time, right? Yeah, someone stupid enough to bet me on the Conor McGregor Mayweather fight, giving oh, me. Oh, I had a conversation about, about, about that with that, someone like, who's sitting, who like he he it believes that that McGregor has a chance. God, you know, and the people were saying, "Oh, six to one odds. That seems pretty. That's pretty good." I'm like, I would maybe fifty to one. Like, I don't think personally, I don't think McGregor can win that fight. Ninety nine out of, I think a hundred times out of a hundred, Mayweather wins. No, I'll give I give I'll give him ten percent chance. Ten percent. Sorry, I'll give. Yeah, I mean, no, I give maybe him maybe one percent. I give him five percent because right. he is powerful. Okay, okay. Five at a hundred fights, he wins three on flash knockout. Okay, all right, fair enough, fair enough. So whatever, that's not great. Then you would need what would the math be for that to to make that bet? 
If he could win I mean, three out of a hundred. Three out of a hundred? So what, what's that like? Or say he wins f- f- four out of a hundred. Say he wins four. Well, let's say five out of a hundred. Five out of a hundred. That's a nice just, even number. What's that? That's 20 to you one, would need right? 20, you would need uh, 20 to one odds yeah. just to break even. Just to break even, yeah. Right? Yeah, pretty much. So that's why six to one ain't no. good. Yeah. But it's very good for Mayweather, I, would, I think. Yeah. It, it, yeah, if it's six to one, that's pretty good for Mayweather. I, I mean, that's great. I, if you're loaded, it's still a lot of money to put well, in. Well, in 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 betting, you, the 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 how much of you it, don't think about it. The, you don't think about it. Yeah. It's just whether it's the right move or not. I mean, you know, it. like I mean, again, we're gonna we're running on a tangent, but like the there are very there are enough unknowns that I wouldn't want to bet on Mayweather because the reason why uh, the reason why is the yes, I I, know, I understand that fix. if you're gambling. No, no, I don't think that. There, no, okay, the luck factor. The reason why is uh, I, taking out. I get that you know if you're going to bet, you're betting the odds. You're not worried about what you have, but it will cost a lot to bet on him. And there are a few unknowns. He hasn't fought in a while. We, I would so think that he's been training that because odds. that's how Mayweather is. He trains constantly, but we don't know how much he's been training. Yeah. Uh, we don't know how seriously he's taking the fight. Yeah. Obviously, we we don't think he's going to have a hard time. Maybe, how confident is he that he's going to win? Well, that, and, the, all these unknowns factor. Yeah, there into are the enough odds. unknowns. I just don't think that factors with, into there are enough it unknowns, especially with him having not fought in a while. That the odds are still a little too high for me to want to make a bet on him. Yeah, it's, to it's make not it really worth, worth it. my while. Well. I think mean, it's worth it. I'd have to. Spend, you don't have the bankroll to make yeah, it worth exactly. it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's why. Like, if I was okay. loaded, sure. But like, well, that's you know, a big issue. Too. If I want to make any money, if, I, if like, okay, if it's six to one to make a thousand dollars, what's that? That's six times t- or six thousand dollars, right? Yeah. I, or, yeah. So, so I had to spend six thousand bucks to make a thousand dollars. I don't have that kind of money to just no, throw around at a, at a fight. Yeah. So, and there's too many unknowns. If this is Mayweather right after he fought Pacquiao. Sure, I wouldn't think twice about. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a lot of money to spend, but uh, I think there's just he's too far off. I still don't think he's gonna have a hard time. You know, I think it's gonna be pretty right. easy, but I wouldn't make that bet. Okay. So anyhow, all right. So back to the discussion. I'm not gonna make this a discussion about poker. So yeah, there were hands. That three to one was only the tip of the iceberg. There was many hands where I was actually a much bigger favorite with, for a lot of money, and um, I actually got very the actually mathematically some some of the hands that happened to me were very very low percentage that it would happen, especially hand after hand after hand. So I w- ran through a streak of bad luck. It happens. Uh, I still profited. I still made well. So I'm not gonna talk about the luck because that I can't help. But what I can talk about was. Uh, the, the, one of the most important elements to, if you're going to be a successful poker player which is your leak which basically how much money did I lose or did I not gain through my own leaks or my own bad decisions and I believe that for a, a portion of this, uh, for this of, my, of my sessions that I played very poorly mm-hmm. right? and it's much like mixed martial arts where you can be awesome during a fight and then if you, you blink for, and if you just get off your horse for two seconds and you start taking it lightly, you start thinking, boom, you get knocked out. So fortunately, that didn't happen. I didn't, I didn't lose everything, but uh, I, I played very poorly for various reasons. And I'll briefly, uh, one because I, uh, I needed a break, one because I was hungry, uh, one because I was on tilt, I was frustrated for the bad luck that I had, which, you know, is emotional means I should have, if I had, uh, when I had said I was going to, if I had gotten up and had uh, gone to eat, I would have probably saved myself just $250 there alone mm. because I would have avoided losing. Um, so that was profit. Um, then I just made some poor decisions. Um, and so overall, my profit, which was you know only five hundred dollars, granted, I, I bought in a lot for the tour. So really, I'm going to say my profit was a thousand because I also bought in for the tournament. I'm going to say that separately. So I used my winnings to buy in. So I'm going to say really my profit was a thousand dollars. Okay. But it should have been fifteen hundred dollars. Okay. So right? you leaked so I, be- I leaked away five hundred dollars. Okay. Right out of making poor decisions. So. Um, now that's five hundred dollars. That that you may not look at it as only five hundred, and I may look at it as an important. I learned from it, so maybe it was worth it in the long haul to lose that mm-hmm. because I will learn those lessons and not make it in the future. Um, but if still, that was five, that so, was my profit. So now, while I was getting dressed this morning, I started thinking about how similar it is to your health and to fitness, and we we often talk about the the uh, your workouts. Healthy meals are money in your fitness bank, right? So I started thinking about all my health leaks and 
what prevents me from being in better shape, either aesthetically, better uh, physical condition for athletics, uh, better uh, condition for my uh, organs and heart health and uh, blood pressure, stuff like that, all of these things. And I started thinking about the leaks. And I realized everyone has leaks. And if you can plug up as much of these leaks as possible, just how is in poker, maybe if I could have, uh, I'm human, I'm gonna make mistakes, right? So let's say I couldn't plug up all the leaks, but if I plugged up four-fifths of my leaks, maybe I'd have an extra $400. Mm-hmm. So this episode is about plugging up your fitness leaks, your health leaks. Um, we're gonna explain what a few of them are, and then it's up to you to plug them. We know that we're human. You're not gonna plug all the leaks, but you can plug some of them, and that, that, might, be, that might be a way to, to, if you're finding that you're plateauing, start plugging leaks. Right. If you're trying to get some traction, start plugging leaks. So what would you say is, I, I have my answer, easy answer for what mine is. What's your main, like the primary leak for you? Uh, for me, ooh, um, for me, uh, I think my, my primary leak is You want me to give you mine while you not think of yours? Ha- well, I, I, I th- I think my primary leak is I have two. not uh, is eating un- unhealthy food out of you know eat too too much out of lack of preparation. Okay. So that I know that's it's not really a leak. No, that's a, that's a good one. We talk about it a lot. So that's a good one. I think that I don't I don't eat unhealthy too many. Uh, I I believe the most overall one is uh, unnecessary food. Mm-hmm. Uh, why, whether it be through uh, very unhealthy snacks, for or or basically, I think the biggest leak is eating food that get, provides no nutritional value, mm-hmm. right? And I'm not ta- so I'm I'm not talking about like a dessert at a nice dinner that we're gonna factor into your quality of life. Mm-hmm. I'm talking oh you're passing something you see a candy bar you eat it for no just because you want to eat it mm-hmm. right you're gonna have some of that of course that's quality of life again but how much of it I'm talking about Drinking extra soda, mm-hmm. too much, you know, sugar in your coffee. Those are extra. Now, once again, some of them you're just going to have quality of life, mm-hmm. but how much of it? So for oh, yeah. me, how- I think that that's a very big leak. For me, another big leak, uh, especially more recently, is um, very similar. There was a, a hand where uh, I didn't think it through. So if I had placed a, a, a wager uh, at a certain point, I would have profited more but because i didn't place it i didn't profit as much so that's another sort of leak is not gaining the most out of it i think that's a problem i've had as well is not gaining as much out of my workouts phoning it in being distracted so um i think those are my biggest leaks mm-hmm. um what, what do you think okay, your leak so is? i'll give you two i think one i don't know how much it applies to everybody but the other one i think applies to many people so the first one is compulsive eating. So what compulsive I do is eating. I, and this, I don't know if this is an issue other people have, but sometimes like I eat to pass time. Like, oh, like yes. even if I, there like if I go. have lunch at 1130 and it's nine, I'll just want to eat something if I have the time to eat something. And I don't know why, you know what it is. Sometimes if I'm walking from one place to the next, like oh, getting I need new- to eat just yeah. to get to the place. Like, I don't know what it is, but there's this weird kind of compulsive eating that I do where I can eat way more calories than are necessary for the day. And more than even I'm hungry enough to eat just for no reason, but just it's like compulsory. I can't figure it out. So I think that's one thing with me because I can eat like I could have two meals. I could have two breakfasts just for the sake of it for no real reason. So I think that would be one. So I, I want. I just want to yeah. put a sidebar to your to your compulsive eating. That what are the what are you eating? Are you when you're having compulsive eating? Are you eating I mean, a piece of fruit? I mean, it, no, and, no, it's usually, uh, no, it's usually not a fruit. So I mean, it's it depends. Not, it's it not depends a health, if, or, a, or or a plate full of vegetables. It could be a yogurt and granola. It, no, no, it's definitely not a plate full of vegetables. It could be a bagel with cream cheese. It could be oh. eggs on you know two you know scrambled eggs on a roll. It could be uh, any number of things. It really depends. It could be a salad bar. So now it could, could be if say you you know you're gonna eat compulsively because that's just part of it. Could you make better choices oh, sure, of that. Oh, I could so. totally make better choices. So it's just a matter of sometimes that, that mindset of like, I need something that's going to fill me up and wanting to have something substantial enough to fill me up and then making kind of poor choices because 
I'm it's hungry there, you're hungry or be, and yeah then. versus like making because like, I do so, that, well compulsive eating isn't about hunger that's just about something just, else yeah I mean it's two two parts I think part is just eating to, for the sake of it and then part is like well if I'm going to eat might as well you know eat something that's going to sustain myself so I think that's part one for me okay. the other part is lack of sleep which is a huge mm. part it had there there are biological and chemical problems when you don't get enough sleep. Uh, it, it messes with your energy levels. It messes with the actual output of workouts. And I think the single biggest reason for me skipping workouts is usually because I'm just too tired. I'd sure. rather go home and take a nap or I'd rather be at the gym and take a so, nap. So Now, a leak is something preventable. Yeah. Is with this lack of sleep, if you're just working, well, you yes. can't prevent. So or is it because you're in bed and you're go flipping through yes. YouTube? So I think there are two there parts. So leak. part one. So the you, leak is that, not yeah. the the lack of sleep. The lack of sleep isn't a, isn't the leak. Oh no, the lack but, of sleep is a leak. But the reason why you're yes, lacking, but for anybody, I think most people have that. That why I'm not going. I mean, I do work late and I do get up early, and. But the, there's a there's a big difference between even six or seven hours sure. of sleep and four and five hours of sleep. So I think that's my biggest problem is that when I do get home, inst- which is hard for most people, instead of walking the dogs, taking a quick shower and going to sleep, I walk the dogs, I go home, I mess around the printer, I'm online. When I get into bed, I'm on my phone, I'm looking at Facebook. And you know, it's not until it's like 12, 15, I'm like, oh crap, I got to be up in a few hours. Mm-hmm. I, so yeah, the leak is kind of all those other activities, but you know what the result is not sleeping enough, which sure. then carries over to the next day yeah. and so I think that's those are my two biggest problems because when I, I I've a lot been, of people have that it's easy for me to skip person. workouts if I'm just too tired to work out sure uh, so I th- say that's for me and for many people I know many plenty of people who either either they don't work out or they or their lax workouts because they just don't have the time um, right. so what are some of the other leaks that uh, what else can you think of so I think of um, uh, snacks mm-hmm so snacking can be a good thing, right? It, it could be part of your meal, but it's what are you snacking on, yeah. right? So you need fuel throughout the day. You might be hungry. So once again, what are you snacking on? Yeah. Is, is it uh, calories that are going to your, your body's car, your, your, your fuel? Or is it going to your fuel, but also a lot extra on top of that? So I think that that's a huge leak. You need a snack, okay, but what are you eating? Are you eating a Snickers bar? Are you eating two slices of pepperoni pizza? Could you make a better choice? So I think that's an important area. So snacking is a little tricky. We, we talk about like you know, the six small meals a day was always a big thing, and now more modern research kind of says that doesn't really matter if you have six small meals a day or one or two big meals a day. But... The problem with snacking sometimes is that we do have just too much. So even if you're eating healthy or unhealthy, that sometimes if we think that if we, well, snacking is good, but if you add up those calories over the course of the day, it might add up to too much. So part one is maybe, you're right, like too much on on your snacks. Like the snacks are just bigger than they should be. Uh, Part two is the choices. So just making unhealthy choices for your snacks, Uh, which also would probably be another issue of mine sometimes. Uh, Part three is the pseudo healthy snacks. So, you know, like the Nature Valley bars that they're in nice green packaging and they've got like something, you know, honey and something healthy looking on it. But if you look at the contents, it's just, it's basically sugar. It's it's a glorified candy bar. Yeah, exactly. So I think that's another issue is that sometimes people make decisions where they think it's a healthy choice and a healthy snack, but it's not. So, so you kind of have to identify then which leak is it? Is it that you're snacking too much? Is it that you're having a healthy snack and eat? Like let's say almonds. Almonds are a good snack. But if you have a giant bowl of almonds, probably gonna be too many calories if you're trying to lose weight. So it could be that you're having too much of a good thing. It might be that you're eating some bad. Of it is, is goal. Yeah. Some of no, it is goal. It might oriented. be that you're eating bad, or it might be that you're Just you think you're quantity. having something. Even like you you mentioned earlier, and I, I kind of said, no, no, not not always. Like you said, smoothies. For and my now, smoothie is basically the, just fruit and water. Yeah, I mean, well, but, but a spoonful of water. Yes, but no the problem sugar. is that to get the amount of well, and some, even with juicing too, to get the amount of liquid you know, to fill a cup with a smoothie or a juice, it, it takes a good deal of fruits. And so that's a lot of sugar. So again, yeah. not that it's bad for you, but if you're trying to lose weight and and you're having three, 400 calories worth of sugar, it's just something to be aware of. That yeah, yeah. sure, a, f- a juice can be good or fruits can be good, but it's almost better to get it from the source. Instead of having a smoothie, have the fruits. Sure. So I think that's the issue sometimes with smoothies is that they can be loaded with that. There, you can go get Especially a smoothie. Especially ones that have a smoothie, added sugar yeah, on top with of added it. sugar, or yogurt, protein, and the, and the sugar, yogurt. Yeah, so all of a sudden, sudden it's like you, you, you can have a 500 
calorie smoothie, yeah. that's not maybe not the best thing in the world for you. No. So I think um, it's it's just making sure that you're you're making the right choices. I, I'm um, glad you, you mentioned that too. I think beverages in general are are very are one of the the biggest sources of hidden calories, mm. right? Juice, for instance, right? If you drink orange juice, a lot of calories, mm-hmm. right? Uh, I mentioned before sugar in the coffee, right? Yeah. Extra calories, soda. Calories, right? Even Gatorade, yeah. right? Absolutely. So, like yeah. things that you might think. And um, yeah. oh, yeah. okay. I know, I know. Once again, I have a friend who was like, he was getting, he gets Gatorade every day. He's like, yeah, well, this is my one healthy thing, and I felt bad. Like, you know, it's like, yeah, oh yeah, people, no, it's that. not that healthy. It's, not that healthy. it's just sugar water. Oh. I mean, you might need it, you know, depending if, on how hard you work it out. And uh, but most of the time, like, just some water is good, you know, or, or like my my thing, water and a shot of honey yeah, yeah. usually does the trick. But like, uh, yeah. once again, there is. We're not saying you you gotta get rid of all of this. Right? We know that there's quality of life and we know sometimes you, you need coffee and you need to drink your coffee with sugar in the morning. That's fine. Right? We're just we're we're just discussing all of the possible leaks. It's yeah. up to you to choose which ones can you um sort of kick back on. Yeah. What which ones are you able to round out? What else so I think the beverages are big like yeah. very, very sweet. Sugary beverages. And, and with that And then you can add alcohol to alcoholic that. beverages. All right, so we know it's a quality of life. So with, with that don't, it, you gotta stop saying it only because people are gonna start using that as a crutch it's like I'm gonna make this bad choice ah it's quality of but, life but with that <laughs> but no, you have to, you have to, there is a, a part of it you're gonna go out or, so the question is when are you are, are you drinking it yeah right and how much are you drinking alright so you're out you're, you're out with friends you're gonna have some drinks so I guess also partially, what what are you drinking? Yeah. Are you drinking uh, a, a cocktail loaded with sugar and you know very sweet or are you having um you know, a glass of red wine, mm-hmm. right? So partially, what alcohol are you drinking? Some of those, or like if you have one of those frozen daiquiris, those sort of tropical drinks, those are loaded. They can have 900 calories, some of those drinks, yeah. right? Yeah, so, so I mean, yeah. That, what that, alcohol? It's, it's, it's like when moderating when, what you're doing. And I, I have clients that, you know, are weight loss is a goal and they eat pretty well, but they'll drink a bottle, practically a bottle of wine a night. And it's like, well, you know, if you want to lose, like you're going to have to make some choices. And for some people, it's like, well, that's how I unwind. I don't know what I would do without it. And it's like, all right, well, if, but you you have to understand that that's probably what's going to hold you back. That's a big, that's a, that's a huge leak. So think about when you're so, drinking. One thing that, that I suggest um, is... Make make your drinking worth it. If you're just at at, at home, right, and you, you're watching the game after work, you're gonna have a beer, right? Maybe don't have three beers. Have one. So, so you can still enjoy it, but maybe just cut you know cut back a little bit. Yeah, I think one thing I, I've found that's worked with clients, um, not always, but works on and off, is if you're a person who does who drinking is your leak, just cut it in half. Whatever you're doing now, try to cut that in half. You know, honestly, ask yourself like, what am I doing, and how much am I drinking, and then just cut that, and then work from there. You know, it's hard to say stop. You know, especially you if it's a social exactly, thing. But Unless again, you have, how you know, much of the leak problem are, are, are we plugging? So now, um, so before we get to, I was going to get to some physical things, but one more food related thing, and that's, you know, food beyond hunger. Oh yes. So that's the other thing is, well, I think you know one. that it, you know you we're eating to satiate ourselves. Obviously, we we eat for entertainment, I guess, or for the quality of the food. You know, food's good, but. Eating beyond the point of hunger, that's another problem and another kind of leak that I think many people have. You eat in restaurants, especially here, they give you giant or portions. Parties and with, oftentimes, with like, you can take, you can eat half of what you get and then take the rest home. And now you got two meals. Uh, so I do this often. This is another maybe leak for me is that I'll eat way more than I really need to in a sitting, especially when I go to like a salad bar or something where yeah, I just yeah. eat where I feel gross. And mm-hmm. you shouldn't. You should eat until you feel like you're, you're full and that, that's yep. fine. So I think that's another leak. Um, now, when it comes to physical... Well, I, just yeah. a, a, one more thing about that. And I think that um, another thing is eating just because food's there. Yeah. Right? So you go somewhere, you go to a party, uh, they have this nice spread with everything and it's almost impossible not to eat yeah. something. You see nice cheese and a meat and a bunch of, you know, dips and crackers and stuff like that. You're going to have something just how much do you have to have it? All right, so you're going to eat a little bit just cuz it tastes good. Fine. Yeah. Once again, how much? Or do you just keep going back and having more? One little trick that I find is take a plate. Say I'm going to make a plate. <laughs> take a work. little small plate, have what you're going to have and that's it. Yeah, it doesn't work. 
It doesn't yeah, work. Not, but. not for me. <laughs> you <can> try it. <laughs> Depends on your willpower. Um, all right. So now let's get back away from food for a minute and we'll talk a little bit. Uh, so you mentioned distraction. So I guess I'll well, get a little well, bit. Okay. So now this is sort of on the uh, physical like, side. Sim- similar to how when I didn't place a couple bets that would have earned me more money, right? This is sort of not something that you're losing, but something that you are not gaining. Yeah. So we're talking about now at the gym during workouts. Yeah. So when you mentioned distractions, I think to be more specific, I th- there, you know, when you're working out at the gym, the goal is, I mean, not most of us, I know you think that people work out because they enjoy it, but people don't. Uh, and, and, and that's funny. Recently, a few people have said, I hate this, but I know I have to do it. And I'm yeah, saying, yeah. yeah, you should tell Justin that because uh-huh. he thinks that everyone loves working no, 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 out. No, no, I think but, you, you're misquoting me. I think that people that are, that that in order to really get to a certain level, right, you have to really enjoy it. I think yeah, that I that it. people that really it's that it's that the people that are in very good shape that don't enjoy doing it are are very few and far between. Disagree, but okay. You think there's a lot of people that are in excellent sure, shape? yeah, but oh. but okay. Well, so anyway, <laughs> if they just have. A, a, we'll agree to disagree on that, right. but. Regardless, the the goal is to work and to to make the most of your time. So there are plenty of distractions in the gym, whether it's friends or acquaintances or the TV or newspaper or, or your phone. So the bet to me that's a huge leak because it takes away from your efficiency. If you're if you're back and forth on your phone every few minutes, that's going to take time because it takes time to read and then you find an email or you find an article on Facebook or something and then you're distracted. Uh, if you're watching TV. You know, instead of really working, it, it can be distracting. If you're talking to people, it's distracting. You know, for me, when I work out, I like to put on my headphones and I'm in my own world. And I try, you know, I have, I, I try not to be distracted by people. If someone, like, if I see someone approaching me, I'll kind of acknowledge them, like, hi, and then turn away so that they know, like, all right, he's not interested in talking to me right now. So, so try. What, right, so, what if someone says, well, you know what? I, I'm not, I don't have time limits at the gym. I can take my time. I, so, what does it matter? I'm still going to do the same amount. I, Yes. What, and what's no. the what's what? I, I think there's some flawed logic. What What do you think is the flaw with that? The, f- I mean, I get it's not efficient, but sure, if you if you're if you look at it as a social thing, fine. But also, you know, it's not it's inefficient to spend an hour and a half. You're depleting so much of yourself. If you're if you're trying to get a real workout, if you're just somebody who's like you're gonna go, you're gonna do a couple bicep curls and some squats and walk around and talk to people and fake that you're on the bike and walk on the track, fine. You know that then then yeah, it won't make a difference. But if you actually are trying to make progress, then you you want to be efficient and you need to maximize that time. I'm, I'm so gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna add on to what you're saying, and yeah. I and I firmly believe this. I feel that when you're focused at the gym, you actually work harder. Sure. If, like you're really into your workout, you're going to go for those extra reps. You're going to run a little bit longer or a little faster or a little harder. You're going to push yourself that extra. But if you're distracted, it's a lot harder to get to up your intensity. Yeah, it disconnects you from the disconnects exercise. Disconnects you, exactly. So I think that's it. Or, I think- or literally just putting in numbers. The time that you're looking, you're talking to someone, or you're looking up the email, may be a set that you missed or yeah. maybe five minutes extra that you don't want. And then you're warming up and cooling down and warming up and cooling down. And it's just not, it's not effective for the body. So I think if you want to maximize your time, then you work out. When you're done, then you can hang out and talk and chat and do whatever. Um, so all right, so progress the, that's not, not the, gained. Then we have a couple other things. So these are less in the gym and more lifestyle. So basically taking the path of least resistance. So if it's ordering food versus getting up and going out, or if it's taking the escalator or elevator instead of walking up the stairs, or if it's taking a cab instead of walking 10 blocks, things like that where you choose an option that's less active. These are more important if you're sedentary. So we've talked before that, you know, I'll get people to say I walk a lot and that's their exercise. And it's like, yeah, it's, it's weird because it doesn't quite count towards your exercise, but it counts as you know, you're kind of staying healthy and alive. So you want to fight against being sedentary and inactive. And the way you do that is by making the choices that increase your activity. So again, whether it's walking to the train or walking to work instead of taking the train or, you know, walking to get food instead of driving or taking a cab, doing the, taking the actions that allow for more physical activity to me is are where areas that are leaks for people, especially if they're sedentary. Hmm. And 
you know, the other thing when it comes to the gym is like I've, I mentioned the, the Jack Reacher rule always, which is, you know, have your, have your stuff close because you don't know what, you know, you don't know when you're going to have another chance and, to work and out. I, and I think, and, that, I'm, I'm, and to, to go off of that, it's the same thing with wasting time. You might think, oh, well, I could be distracted at the gym. I can work out forever long. Oh, I just got a call. Got to run. Yeah. And now what you were, you were there for 35 minutes. You could have gotten an awesome workout in that time, but because you were futzing around, you just got the emergency call. Now you have to go. Yeah. Oh. No good and, work, you know, not a good workout. Well, yeah, and then so with the with the reacher rule, which is you know have your gym equipment close by because you never know when when uh, you know something might open up. So that's also important. Like if you are busy, especially if you have a very busy schedule where you have a hard time finding time to work out. If you have your workout clothes close, then mm. if something cancels or something pops up, then you can go to the gym. So kind of having a system set up where when the openings op- come up, you can do it is, is also like a way that you can fix a leaky area. Cause you know, if you're, if you're somebody that has a lot of meetings, uh, I'm sure if, if you have lots of meetings, I'm sure you have a certain amount cancel. So there's an hour that wasn't supposed to be free. That's now free. So if you can use that time to work out great, but you have to be prepared and, for that. And sort of w- working off that is canceled workouts. We all know we're going to cancel a couple workouts here or there. Right, maybe because something important came up, or maybe just because you started watching something and time got away from you, and that's it. It's gonna happen. Mm-hmm. We know it. But how many of them? Yeah, are gonna happen. How? Why are you canceling your workout? If you need to cancel it for a really legit reason, but try, if if you're sort of concocting reasons to to cancel your workout, right? That's a leak. Yeah, absolutely. So, like, are you you know are you really that tired, or do you really you know have to you know, write up this, write up your your invoice right this second. Yeah. Right. You know, are you making up an excuse why not to go? Which I think that's you know I've had that's that's maybe one of my biggest leaks. Yeah. Is that I just I get involved with other stuff right before I have to go to the gym and then I just time gets away from me and I'm like oh man I got to do something else. Yeah. So that's a that's a, a huge leak. That's a huge leak cool. for me. Now, do you have anything else or? Is that I think that's uh, a lot of stuff. I think yeah. It's pretty substantial. Yeah. And. Maybe many of you guys have two or three of these or four. Who knows, right? Think about that. Th- think if you plugged up half of your sugary drinks, then you plugged up half of your alcoholic beverages. You canceled uh, a third less workouts, right? You were a little bit more active. You didn't eat, you know, quite as much. You know, maybe you binged, but you only binged. You know, uh, once in a while, right? Um, you have a candy bar, but instead of having that that unnecessary candy bar four times a week, you only have it once a week, right? Think about how that will add up. Now, I, I'm we're gonna get a sort of bit of disclaimer, and we'll we'll probably talk about this. Yes, your body does have a homeostasis where it sort of pulls you back to partially what you're genetically inclined, partially what you've been doing for years. So. I'm not saying that everything is going to make a, such a drastic difference, but it will make a difference. Mm-hmm. So these things will add up. Now, I think that using the, the there is a truth to homeostasis that your body will sort of pull you back, but that can also be an excuse and therefore leak saying, well, my body is going to be what it's going to be, so it doesn't really matter. I think that that kind of goes into the excuse episode. I think we've mm-hmm. done that before. Well, we can do another excuse, yeah. creative excuses. So just to discuss that concept about, well, my body's gonna be what it is. There is a truth to that, but that's, that's an excuse. So um, what do you have to say about plugging up the leaks? Do you think that, uh, how possible is it? Hey, look at what's, it. The best, what's the best way to go about it? Like, I think awareness well, to me do is just- Don't do what Justin be, just said. Don't do what? what you just said, which is pick one thing to start with. You think pick then, one thing? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we've, we've been talked about it many times like that. So start you know, it's hard to thing. make a big, major sweeping changes but in your are life. are major sweeping, sweeping changes? Sure. That's the whole, okay. Yeah. So you think I mean, that everyone, there are a lot more- anyone You think that the leaks are more major than- Yeah, they, they are. They're not as simple as like, you know, putting some chewing gum on, or it is like putting some chewing gum on it and then watching it, you know, fall off. Like it- it takes effort. Even to cut your drinking by a third, it takes effort. Mm. To walk up the stairs when the escalator is right over there takes effort. So I'd say identify one thing, fix that, and once that becomes like a habit and part of your life, then you can fix other Something. things. Unless you, you have a maybe real- Maybe to say, fix, maybe try to go for one of the, one based on eating and one based on physical. 
think that that's reasonable? Uh, yeah, that's even too I mean, much. It, it, like, it depends it, it on the also, person. It also becomes person specific. So, sure. you know, I'd say find one thing to start and start plug with, that. Start with your well, and what what's the one thing that you should start on? Any any whatever works. I I believe the the leak you should start on is the biggest leak, which is whatever the person specific. Okay. Is. Well, yeah. So if if you find you know you you need to decide what your biggest leak is. Well, the, arguably you could say pick one of the smaller ones because it you'll be more likely to succeed, which will that that's a very interesting yeah concept. But I don't. But that's not going to gain you the most. Well, it depends on what value. You're doing. If, the, if the goal is I need results right now, sure, pick the biggest leak. But if the goal is, you know, I just want to get myself on the path to it's an interesting. Change. Well, that's actually a very interesting. This is almost a, a, a concept, a bit debate for another yeah for another episode. Podcast. So that there, regardless, if you start plugging your leaks, you're you're most likely going to have better results. Yes, in you know whether it comes Maybe. to weight loss or overall Possibly. health, athletic ability, better health just in general. So, yeah. Cool. All right. Well, plug your leaks. Yes. Plug, plug your leaks. That'll be the title of the episode. Uh, so, uh, we have an Ask the Trainer. Oh, so go. why don't you. Hey. All right. So, it comes from Lance. It says, Hey, guys, what are some good exercises uh, to do to protect my lower back? I don't have any problems, but after watching friends and family suffer, I want to do what I can to protect hmm. it. That's well, good. The, the, I think the, the best thing that you can do is um i love when you a, answer the ask the trainer questions <laughs> as the expert <laughs> no no no. I, I i think i know quite about what's, what's a, the best a, thing a, you can a do lot about probably um a, a kevlar uh sort of shield vest <laughs> okay. that goes around will protect <laughs> your lower okay, back you, yeah. As, yes yeah yeah exactly that's it <laughs> yep heard, heard that what lance yeah, Lance. Lance Justin has the answer. We're a Kevlar. No, um, I actually want to talk about this because yeah. I've had issues with it. But you go first. We, God, we've done so many episodes. I forget. Did we do a lower back episode? I feel like we did. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure we did. Um, Lance, look uh, in our archive. Just go on the website and just search for lower back. I'm ninety nine percent sure we did a lower back episode. So uh, you can listen to that episode where we talk about the lower back and and some things you can do to protect. You know, the main thing, there, I mean, there are a lot of causes for lower back problems. Some are genetic. Uh, often it really has to do with bad posture, uh, improper form with exercise, uh, bad movement. So there are a lot of potential reasons for the lower back injuries or issues amongst your friends and family. I think the best thing you can do as a fitness enthusiast is to make sure that you're doing things with proper form, that you're you're doing exercises that work the that work on the core, you like work on your trunk as a unit that, that is there to stabilize your, your spine. And, and you don't think about it as like front and back, but you think about it as, as an entire unit that really stabilizes the spine. And that when you do exercises, you're kind of engaging that as its own kind of belt to stabilize you. What I'll do is I believe we posted a list of exercises that are good to work, you know, stretches and exercises that are good on the lower back and good for kind of just strengthening the entire quote, core uh, area, but I will post that again, uh, some good exercises and movements that you can do. Uh, you know, it's a little hard to answer because re- everything is so person specific. You know, if I watched you and saw that your form was really great, then it, m- it might just be things that are more preventative and uh, versus like if you have poor form or weaknesses in certain areas, there may be certain exercises that more specifically suit your needs. So it's a little hard to say specifically what you would need. But like I said, if you're not dealing with issues now, as long, you know, making sure that your form is good and making sure that you're strengthening the trunk as a unit is important. Uh, when you're doing things like squats or deadlifts or even bench pressing or any ab exercise that you're doing things that with proper form, you know, that your, your hip flexors and your hip mobility is good. So there's a lot to work on. And again, we'll leave that in the in the app. So again, if you haven't downloaded the Gym What's app, you can get all that stuff right there on the app. But uh, yeah, I hope that I, I helps like to, a little bit. Well, I'd like to add yeah. something to that. Yeah. Um, you know, what Ryan said about the exercises is spot on, but there are some lifestyle things that you could do. I'm not a doctor or a scientist in this regard, uh, but I believe that these things help. And I think it's to be very aware of your posture while you are sitting. Um, mm-hmm. Not to slouch while you're standing, <laughs> not to slouch... Um, be aware of the type of chair that you're sitting in. Some chairs can be, uh, if you're sitting at a desk for a while, um, while I don't know what the research says, um, certain uh, lumbar uh, pillows may help. I think that having a physio ball and sitting on that for a while with good posture may also help. Um, 
while you're walking, also to learn real proper form for walking may help with uh, lower back as well. Once again, not a doctor, not <laughs> a, uh, a a scientist in this so there, biologist in this regard, but there's some I mixed, think that some of those things might there's help. There's some mixed research actually on that, so that's why I would, I would push back a little bit. That I think some of the more recent stuff kind of suggests that it's not, it's not about... It is, posture is important, right? And how you move is important and not sitting slouched is important. But it's also, if you're sitting for an extended period, it's actually better to shift positions oh, regularly yeah, yeah. than it is important. to stay. Same thing with standing. It's it, it's better to shift your positions regularly rather than just sit in one, it, like sitting in an upright posture in the same position, you know, for eight hours is probably not good for you. So you know, yes, you should be aware of your posture and aware of how you're sitting and aware of your form and aware of how you're walking. But it's also important actually to shift regularly. That's and a, that's uh, so, you know, but again, there's, there's some mixed stuff there because you're going to hear some people that will give your more your advice, which is always have good posture. And then you're going to have others that are going to say, yeah, and, you know, you want to have good posture, but you also, it's good to move around a little bit and shift, I definitely know, think shift it's how good your to body is. So. And the sort of last thing <laughs> I'll mention is, uh, it's unfortunately what people do not do is if at the the first sign of lower back pain that does not feel just like a soreness or something that uh, may be medical, uh, or even, look, anything, do not take chances. Do not mess around with it. Yeah, don't I, ask me. Right? I, I, no. I personally believe to, to if anything seems even a little bit out of the ordinary with, you, with your spine, get it checked and out immediately. And I say that as a joke, but, I, but I'm dead serious. Like, literally today. Oh, yeah, yeah. Don't ask not professionals Literally today, somebody came up to me. It's like, yeah. I've got. I'm dealing with some sciatica again. What exercises should I do? And it's like, I was like, so you, you've been diagnosed, Actually, you've dealt that, with that's it. Maybe like, some of the, the maybe best. you should go to a doctor. That, that you know <laughs> don't what? Ask it's me funny that. that you say that. It's not just don't ask you, but don't. I, and it, once again, I, I, who you know, you could take my advice or not. Don't don't go to pseudo professionals, mm -hmm. right? Uh, if you want to go to a chiropractor, I, just you know, you know, buyer beware, right? Some of them do great work, right? I personally believe go to an at the first sign of anything go to an orthopedist. Maybe a chiropractor may not help you, but he just might drain your wallet. Yeah, I've known and people that it's happened to. Maybe they make you worse, or yeah. maybe they don't steer you to the treatment that you really need. And while you're paying through the nose to this person, you're not making any progress. Yeah. I mean, the, the key is, yeah, like Justin said, you go. Go to a professional who whose job is to treat. Now, a lot of people don't trust doctors. They or they don't. They 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 think oh they're just going to try to send me to surgery. And I know people who've had bad experiences sure, in, sure. in that situation too. But in general, you know, if there's pain, I think the bigger key is if if you're dealing with pain, ask a professional whose job is to fix that. Be, don't be ask your local pseudo, personal be trainer. Of pseudo it's not even pseudo professionals. Just like ask the right person because I'm I'm amazed at how many people we've talked about this before. I'm amazed at how many people so ask me it. for advice on pain. And even today, you know, with, with you know, often if someone asks a question about pain, I try to be, the, that's my first answer. This one, it was more preventative or kind of what you'll call sometimes prehabilitation, yeah. you know, which is what it sounds there, like. You, but, um, you know, it's one thing to ask somebody like me, you know, what do I do to protect it and make sure it's okay? But it's another thing to say, hey, I'm in pain. How do I fix it? So, yeah, definitely, you know, if, if, there, if you do deal with any pain, then get it checked out. But up until then, you know, there are things you can do to protect your lower back and to avoid injuries. And you know, this it. is related to it. There is an interesting documentary uh, just came out. I got to watch it. We should watch it and actually review it. It's about a, uh, a doctor who was uh, sort of radical and he believed that a very large percentage of his patients that came to him with lower back pain, that the pain was caused by uh, psychological problems. I'll just leave, uh, I, I, I'm just gonna leave it open-ended like that. We need to watch the, the documentary and research the doctor because he believed that a lot of lower back pain was due to emotional pain. I don't have to watch it. So, uh, sounds interesting. Maybe, right? we'll see. But, so all right. Check it out. That's it. I think we left we left uh, our listeners with a lot. Yes. Uh, and like you know, as episodes. usual, our stuff is at thegymwits.com. If you haven't yet, please rate us on iTunes. Uh, we have the Gymwits app uh, uh, for iPhone, iTunes, Android. Uh, so, or sorry, rate us on Apple Podcasts. It's not iTunes anymore. Uh, but download us on iTunes. You can download uh, on Android. Download uh, review. Help us out. We're, our listenership is growing. And, uh, you know, thanks to stuff people listening. And uh, the more we listeners, really the, the we're gonna, more we can do. We're going to bring you a lot of fantastic new content. Let's not I'm promise saying. that because we've said it before, but we're going to try. No, we have. We keep giving <laughs> fantastic content. We keep giving fantastic content. We're going to give more. We've started. 
but we haven't given Come yet. Come on, you can't tell people that we're not going to give them great content. No, I, we will give. Well, we, we're giving you great content. I'm just saying, let's 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 stay in our lane Brian until like we to start. Anyone. Until we start yeah. producing that new content, which which is is on the way. I hope. But let's let's uh, let's get that stuff out there first. Content's there. It's being content. Yeah, we're working on it. We're, we're good stuff. Good stuff uh, from our our wacky minds that uh, you know we just need to get uh, pen to paper basically. Yeah, yeah. All right. So that's it. As usual, I'm Ryan George. I'm Justin Guild, a.k.a. Chef Sonic. And we are the Gymwits. Gymwits.